Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you once again for coming. We are now up to the 12th lecture on the uh, Pesach Haggadah, the Passover Haggadah. And we finished off last week with the Dayenu, and now we're up to Brem Gamliel's famous statement about the three items, three words, three concepts that have to be stated in order to fulfill your obligation of, of the Pesach Haggadah. And they are Pesach, Matzah, and Mar. So <clears throat> the... Um, why are these three mitzvahs different? And that we must say a reason for them. So the Shach says that uh, since the Torah gives the reason for all three, we must do the mitzvahs of each while having in mind their reasons. Again, there are other mitzvahs that don't have reasons, so we can't do that, but these we do. Now, according to the Shalah HaKadosh, <clears throat> the three concepts of Pesach, Matzah, and Mar, Pesach alludes to Avram Avinu, Abraham, our father, Matzah to Yaakov, our father, and Mor to Yitzchak. Now, Matzah represents our Torah obligation even today, uh, such as, again, eating Matzah. It's one of the two mitzvahs we have of the day of, that are Torahic, that and the Haggadah. Mor represents rabbinic obligations, making fences around the Torah, to create conditions that encourage the fulfillment of Torah laws alluded to by Mar, which today is rabbinic. <clears throat> and Pesach represents actions that are neither mitzvos or sins. They are neutral acts, such as engaging in business or eating or drinking. In such things, the Torah approach is, our Torah approach is, Bechol de Rachav, no, no, you should know him, in all your ways you should know his him, God meaning, sanctify even though even our mundane affairs to God. God should be in everything that you do, based on the Rebbe and the Pesach HaGadah. I once had a uh, meeting, a Yechidus with the Rebbe, with a group of successful businessmen. And the Rebbe said something that I'll never forget. And what he said was that a Jew should be with his Torah the way a businessman is with his business, which was a very astute from a man who wasn't a businessman. Because what the Rebbe said is that a businessman never leaves his business. When you're an owner, it's with you 24-7. And so, too, a person's Torah should be with him the same way. One should never be divorced from it. And everything that you do in every place that you are, Torah should somehow creep in. Also, Pesach alludes to our being willing to sacrifice to serve God. Matzah, that we must be in attendance only 18 minutes. Again, staying awake at the wheel. Um, also keeping life simple and not being obsessed with luxuries, vanities, and arrogance. Mar, that nothing is really bad. Some things are bitter, no pain, no gain. Being sameach bechelko. The rabbis uh, say this term, who's a happy person, a person sameach bechelko, which means who's happy with what he has. It's very interesting. They're so spot on with everything they say. Sameach is a present tense. So if someone were to give you a large sum of money, so before you get the money, you may not be happy because you, you need money. And after you get the money, you may still not be happy because you want more money. But when you get the money at that moment, then you're happy. And that's why it's present tense. A person should always be within the moment of when you're getting it and feel that joy and stay there. And that's Sameach Bechelko. The hotter the temperature that you heat up steel, the stronger the steel is. So a person needs to know that's how we gain strength. Again, as the Jews in Egypt who were put in the crucible, came out rock solid, and even those Jews that survived the Holocaust, for the most part, were very strong individuals, and most often they're not very successful. Also that um, Pesach, the Korban Pesach, Paschal offering was necessary to protect our houses. This was necessary because in our house there were those who did not deserve to be spared. Matzah was a result of the hurry in which we had to leave Egypt. This was necessary because we had almost succumbed to the Egyptian impurity. As we know, we are on the 49th level of impurity. Had they reached the 50th, the abyss, they would not have been able to have been saved. Mar reflected our suffering in Egypt. This, too, was a necessary consequence of our spiritual decline and assimilation. These three are relevant even today to warn us not to follow in the path of sinners, but to go and, and in, in the way of Torah and mitzvahs based on the Yalkut Tov.
Now, why is it Mur first? Uh, again, that was the pain of the Egyptian exile, of the servitude. So one cannot truly appreciate the depth of suffering until one has been freed of it, based on Rosh Simcha Bunin. It's in hindsight that we really understand it. It is also important to always remember where we come from, to appreciate where we are, based on by Yigadu La Mordechai. Also, there's allusions that this would not be the last exile. Again, so therefore, still a certain bitterness. But Shimshu for her says that these three things, Pesach, Matzah, and Mara, teach us that the redemption was entirely the work of God. We had no part in it whatsoever. Pesach, sacrifice, which is the God, we sacrifice the God of the Egyptians, sign of Aries putting ourselves completely in the, hand, in the hands of God. As you know, that the Jews separated the sheep on the 10th of the month, four days before they left. Sheep attached to a bed, it's not very quiet inside of a house. And yet they did that. Matzah, going out to a barren wilderness with no provisions, all the food in Egypt had been destroyed by the plagues. They went out only with the matzah that they carried. <clears throat> and Mar, symbolizing their passive suffering, until the time that God chose for redeeming them. Also, they had to follow a process of first Pesach, removing all of the idol worship from themselves, matzah, removing all of their arrogance, and more, removing all the negativity to serve God with joy, based on a base Mordechai. Again, as we know, that the main aspect of Judaism, as it says in Tehillim, Ivdu Hashem B'Simcha, to serve God with joy person doesn't serve God with joy, then the truth of the matter is you'll wind up being in some insincere serving of God. Because again, if a person is unhappy, then the end result is he'll sin. The Yitzhah doesn't care about you serving God. He just wants you miserable. People that are unhappy sin. Now the order is strange in that one would have thought that Mara should come first, uh, but the order is very logical really as it applies to all generations. The Korban Pesach, the Paschal offering, is first because this is, this is the only holiday that begins before the date in that the Korban Pesach, the Paschal offering, was sacrificed on the 14th of the month. The holiday begins on the 15th. And one had to register to be a participant before it was sacrificed. Otherwise, it was too late. So from this fact, we can learn that serving God requires forethought. You can't just fall out of bed in the morning and serve God. Also, the only way a Jew can truly serve God is by connecting to a group, the nation of Israel. Again, the power, achdus, unity. And the group you choose makes a big difference. As the Mars says many times, if you walk into a perfume store and buy nothing, you still walk out smelling better. And we see how important beginnings are. This is the only holiday, Paschal offering was brought, if you didn't bring it at, on Pesach time, the next 30 days later, you had a second chance. A benevolent God, because beginnings are so important. A person starts badly, the rest is a disaster. Whenever I teach a bar mitzvah boy, or someone to tell a speech, I always tell them to memorize the first, first, few, first, first few verses. If you stumble at the beginning, that's the end of it. If you're solid in the beginning, you have at least a shot of doing it well. Very important. Again, with Karben Pesach. Matzah requires work and timing. You cannot leave the dough alone or it will rise and become chametz. And so too in our service of God. We must stay, be awake as we mentioned it, stay awake at the wheel. Stay in the moment. Again, that a person's mind can't drift and that's what happens with everything. That we start to daydream. And a person needs to know that when that happens, focus becomes the key to everything. If you don't focus, then bad things always happen. Then more, that life, meaning success, comes with some bitterness. It's interesting, without bitterness, there's no betterness. It becomes very important. And again, as they say, no pain, no gain. Bitter, but not bad. If one looks properly at challenges in life, he will grow and be even more successful. If someone tells you to jump as high as you can, and I tell it to people, I say, what's the first thing you'll do? And they say, jump. And I say, no. First thing you'll do if you're smart is bend down. The lower you bend, the higher you'll jump. So a person should not see a loss, a negative, 
as something negative, turn it into a positive. Jump higher because you had to bend down a little bit further. We learn nothing from success, but a whole lot from failure. Again, based on base Mordechai. So the um, first chapter, first of these groups of Pesach Matzimar. So it says Pesach. Why did our fathers eat Passover? Eat a Passover offering during the period when the temple still stood? Because the Holy One blessed be He passed over the houses of our fathers in Egypt. That is as written. You shall say it is a Passover offering for God who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and spared our houses. And the people bowed down and prostrated themselves. Now, the, the matzah represents a redemption that they did not have time to let their dough rise. And the morah represents the bitterness of the exile. So why isn't the morah mentioned before the matzah? The answer given is that the nation of Israel was supposed to be in exile for 400 years, but the Egyptians treated them so harshly that God decided that 200 years, 210, was equivalent to the normal 400 years of servitude. Also, so the morah became, a, so therefore, the morah became a device to hasten the redemption. So the Korban Pesach, Calcul so, pardon me, so God calculated the end and, of the, and the redemption was first in his mind. So we eat the matzah first, again, based on the note of the Yehuda. Now when it talks about the, uh, the carbon Pesach, it says, Al -shum Pesach, Al -shum she Pesach Baruch Hu, because God passed over. Now the... Uh, it says Shir and Shir Hashir and Rabbah. The God leaped over the leaped over means the calculation for the appointed time and redeemed us early. Again, the Jews were to be in e Egypt for four hundred years. God jumped over that. Also, God was revealed in all His glory to the nation of Israel, who were not at all fit for such a revelation. In doing so, God skipped over all the rules, so to speak. The rule book was thrown over, thrown out, and He just redeemed them based on the Alter Rebbe. And it says, Vespatenu Hitzil, and God saved our houses. Now, that really seems extra when he saved our houses. That the Egyptians trying to save their firstborn, there were those that really believed this would happen, hid their first, firstborns in the houses of Jews. And even though they were killed in those homes, no firstborn of the Jews died in that home. Based on Yabarta Bincha. So again, so even though they... There were Egyptians hidden, and the and the angel of death was there, killing the firstborn of the Egyptian. No Jew was killed, and again we have to remember, not even a Jew who was supposed to die naturally died. Then it says matzah, zu, this matzah that we eat, this unleavened bread, because of the dough of our fathers that did not have time to become leavened. Before the King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be He, revealed Himself to them, and redeemed them, as is written, and they baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt into unleavened bread, for it had not fermented. Because they were driven out of Egypt, could not delay, nor they had had time for any provisions on the way. And when it talks about matzah, matzah teaches us about all the mitzvos. The Torah says in Shemos, and you shall guard the matzos. Now, Chazal, the rabbis, expound upon this and say that the letters of matzos and mitzvos, you can hear it, are really identical. Mitzvos are like matzahs. Regarding the dough of matzah, if you knead it constantly and get it into the oven in the allotted time, it's called a mitzvah. But if you let it sit too long, or if it gets into the oven just a moment too late, then it's called chametz. And so too regarding a mitzvah. If you perform a mitzvah in the proper time, immediately, as soon as that time to do it comes, then it's called a mitzvah. But if you delay, it is as if the mitzvah becomes chametz, and it loses its power based on a grah. I can promise you if someone tells you they're going to give you $100,000 at 9 o'clock, you're not going to come sliding into home plate at 9 o'clock. You'll be there early. You want to make sure that you don't miss it. A person needs to look at every mitzvah as a diamond. And if you do that, there's an alacrity instead of a lethargic 
way of handling misfits. If I don't do it now, I'll do it later. Many times you don't get to do it at all. And it says again, I'll show mom, we'll talk about that in a second. And if, at the end of the parak, if it says, well, yachlis ma'meya, that they were not able to tarry. It's amazing that at the moment of the redemption, that the nation of Israel had to leave Egypt immediately. They were the victors, so why were they in such a rush? The answer is because they, so, they had sunk to the 49th level of impurity. This they did in 210 years. And yet we have been in the Galut, in the exile, for almost 2,000 years. And yet we have not forced God's hand to redeem us by reaching that low level of the 49th level. What's the difference? Why haven't we reached that level? So Mashiach would have to come. And the difference between us and them is the Jewish soul and the Shema. Also, the mitzvah of Mila, circumcision, and Torah. That all of this happened in Mount Sinai, of receiving a Jewish soul. Again, the Jews doing the mitzvah of Mila. And again, receiving the Torah there, based on Razam and Shrutkin. The next thing deals with is Mara. Now, Mara, why do we eat the bitter herb? And it says, because the Egyptians embittered the lives of our fathers in Egypt, as it says. They embittered the lives with hard labor, with mortar and bricks, and with all manner of labor in the field. Whatever service they made them perform was with hard labor. Now, when it says, Vimara was Chayim, and they embittered their lives. Now, when we read this in the Torah, the Torah is read with a, with a song. It's called a trup, cantillation. And in order for a Balkhikorah, for the reader, to know what, what notes to use, there are signs. The sign, signs over for Yomoros Kareem is called the Kadma Vyazla, and which means get up and leave, as the words are translated. And the Gematria, the numerical value, Kadma Vyazla, is 190. So because of the bitterness of the, of the servitude, God made them get up and leave 190 years early. Again, nothing is an accident. Now, what's interesting is, this words, the words al shumma, that why do we eat the uh, maras because of this and the matzah because of this? Same thing with Pesach. Everything that happened to our, our ancestors and us is al shumma because of the fact of manishtana, how different we are. That's what it's all about. That God always helps us to remember that we are his chosen people that we have a very important mission, very special mission in this world. And whenever we try to forget, he makes sure to have the world remind us of who and what we are and what our responsibility is. Now these four Torahic mitzvahs, there are the, the four Torahic mitzvahs of the Paschal offering, Matzah, Mara, and Haggadah, correspond to the four kingdoms that subjugated the nation of Israel after the redemption from Egypt. Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And the four mitzvahs also serve as a rectification for four major sins that we can do. The sin of idol worship, immorality, murder, and some say the worst, Lush and Hara. The Paschal offering rectifies the sin of idol worship. Since the Egyptians worshipped the lamb, and the nation of Israel slaughtered the lamb as an offering to God. Matzah rectifies immor immorality, for chametz's dough symbolizes the eight Sahar in a person. The matzah is free of the chametz. Mar rectifies murder. The numerical value of the word mar is 446, the same as the word maves, which is death. And Haggadah rectifies lush and hara, which arises from baseless hatred, the primary sin that led to our present exile. So he who elaborates on the story of the exodus from Egypt is to be praised based on his Fasemis. And it continues and it says, in every generation one is duty bound to regard himself as though he personally had gone out of Egypt. That is written, you should tell your son on this day. It was because of this that God did for me when I went out of Egypt. It was not only our fathers, whom the Holy One, blessed be he, redeemed from slavery, that we too were redeemed with them, as is written, and he brought us out from there so that he might take us to the land which he promised to our fathers. Now, it says, Behold, door of a door in every generation, it's come to us to see ourselves as if we went out of Egypt. 
that in every generation a person needs to look at himself because it is he who must take himself out of Mitzrayim. The shackles of his own boundaries, Mitzr, is a boundary. The blessings, uh, the blessing and need for introspection is what we're talking about. Also the ability and necessity to change good judgment, to, cha to change. The ability to not be dogmatic. A person has to be able to grow. You know, many times you talk to a person, they say, this is who I am. It's not acceptable. Truth is that that's where you start. That each person, as we say in the brain of Fashot, the brain of Fashot, Rabos, every person is created with some deficiency. And our job in life is to change that. That's what we're here for. Maybe just to change one thing. But a person cannot accept that he's good everywhere, but only here. That's what his challenge in life is. Good judgment comes from experience. And experience comes from bad judgment. And it continues. And it says, Lefichok, therefore, Anatu Chayyam Lahodos, that we are duty bound to thank, praise, pray tribute, glorify, exalt, honor, bless, extol, and acclaim his, him who performed all these miracles for our fathers and for us, that he brought us forth from slavery to freedom, from grief to joy, from mourning to festivity, from darkness to great light, and from servitude to redemption. Let us therefore recite a new song before him as a hallelujah. Now, the Ficha, therefore, so the question becomes, why the Ficha? Why this word? Because of this. We're about to begin the Hallel. The Hallel is only said on those miracles done in Eretz Yisrael in the land of Israel. The Marshal explains that in Eretz Yisrael, God does miracles. And outside of Eretz Yisrael, outside the land of Israel, it's done by angels. But on this special night, it was God himself who did so. So therefore, we're able to say the Hallel. Is praise to God even though it was done outside the land of Israel. Basically, you've been to when your child will ask. Now, what we have here is nine terms. Lahodos, lahalo, lashabach, lafora, laroma, lahada, lavorok, ali, lakales. These nine expressions, plus the last of the word of Haluluka, make ten, corresponding to the ten different ways that Tehillim begins. Psalms. The greatest praise of God is Haluluka. For this term denote, denotes praise and also the two letter name of God who is being praised, and also the ten spheros, based on the Maharal of Prague. Also these nine expressions of praise, and, and then it concludes with Hallel, that these nine praises allude to the nine plagues, and the call for Hallel alludes to the final plague, that of the killing of the firstborn, which sealed the redemption and ended the exile, based on the Gra. It says, we they were taken me Afeli or Godel, from darkness to great light. While in Egypt, they were like a fetus in the womb of its mother. With the exodus, they were born as a nation and entered the light of existence. And it says, Nomar let us be fond of those say before him, Shira Chadasha, a new praise. Now, Shira Chadasha is feminine. The question is why? Because our redemption is not complete until the coming of Mashiach. So therefore, it's a weak uh, redemption. We're waiting for the permanent redemption based on a Tosfus. Also, because the exile came almost, uh, came about in the merit of righteous women of the generation, so therefore, it was in the feminine. If not for them, A, the, for there now would have been the proper number to be redeemed. And again, they were the ones, again, who did not sin throughout all of the experience in Egypt and in the desert based on a Shalak Kaddish. And it says, Hallelujah, beginning of the uh, first verse in the Hallel. Praise you, servants of God. Praise be the name of God. Blesses the name of Hashem for now and forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, Hashem's name is praised. High above all the nations is God, and above the heavens is his glory. Who is like Hashem our God, who is enthroned on high, yet deigns to look upon heaven and earth? He raises the destitute from the dust. From the trash heaps, he lifts the needy to seat them with nobles and with nobles of his people. So he transforms the barren wife into glad mother of children. And it says, Hallelujah. 
Now, it says, Halu Abde Hashem, praise are the servants of God. Hal is only recited during the day, except on Pesach. It is said at night, both in the Mire of Prayer and also here at the Haggadah. Because God made the night as bright as day. Also, the first two chapters here of the Hollow deal with the exodus from Egypt and are recited before the meal begins. And the rest of the Hollow is called for Mashiach, that calls for Mashiach. And we look forward to the final redemption. And again, the final second part is called the Hollow of Redemption, based on the uh, heritage of the Haggadah. The Hallelu has a numerical value of 71. When the children of Yaakov went down to Egypt, they were 70 souls. Since God went down with them, the total of the Gematria was 71, hallelujah. So the verse can be read, 71 were the servants of God, based on the al -Kuchmoni. Also, that 71 alludes to the Sanhedrin, this Jewish Supreme High Court, which had 71 judges, also the 70 elders that Moshe Benu chose, with himself being the 71st. Now, who said these words? Paro, on the night of Pesach, when he wanted the nation of Israel to leave, he said, in the past you were my slaves, but now you are the servants of God, based on the Yalkut Shemoni. And it says, Mi Mizrak Shemesh Amavol, from the setting, rising of the sun until it sets. Now, why not say all day? Why use that terminology? Governor Melch is telling us, that it makes no difference when things are good, Shemesh, meaning the sun, or things are difficult, Ab Mavo, when it sets. One should praise God. Because in, in the end, everything is good. Again, as we mentioned before, sometimes things are bitter. A person sometimes has to go through some difficulty, wanting to recognize what is good, but also to get there. You know, that becomes the key, and how quickly we forget the bad when the good comes. And it says that he took us from the Ashpos Yoram Evyo, from the dung heaps, he lifted up the destitute. During periods of spiritual downfall in the desert, Christ, the nation of Israel, spoke longingly about the Egyptian past. When they were on a spiritual high, they regarded Egypt as a trash heap. So when the nation of fell into sin, then they preferred Egypt to the company of God, based on the heritage of Agora. And it says, when they left Egypt, that there is a debate between the uh, school of Shammai and Hillel. Be Shammai states that this psalm should be said after the meal, since the nation of Israel did not leave Egypt until after midnight. Be Hillel states that the psalm should be read before the meal, since they did not leave Egypt until the next morning. And there is no point in delaying the recitation of the psalm until after midnight. So Basila focuses on the actuality, while Beishamai focuses on the potential. And the law follows Basila based on concept that potential for redemption is not sufficient. Redemption must be manifest in actual fact, again, based on a Rebbe's Haggadah. Also, the fact that it says, uh, and when the Jews left Egypt, the children of Israel saw that again that Yehuda was sanctified. Uh, the God singles out Yehuda as God's sanctified one, since it was Yehuda, Nachshon ben Aminara from the head of the tribe of Yehuda, who sanctified God's name by jumping into the sea first amongst all of Israel. Also, the tribe of Yehuda went in up to their noses as well. They went first and led, based on the Radak and Shehakuchmoni. Also, the nation of Israel were always divided into two general groups, the tribe of Yehuda and the rest of the nation. And this division began long before the division that occurred in the days of Rechavan, the son of Shlomo, when you had the two kingdoms of Israel and Yehuda of Rechavan, Yerachim ben Nevad, based again in the Passover Haggadah. And uh, it says again that they, how you run of the when they crossed the sea, the, saw, the sea saw and it, and it ran. What did the sea see that it had a split? It was the coffin of Yosef. God said to the sea, flee from the one who fled. Then when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Yosef, he fled from her. He went against his nature, a young boy. So too you should go against your nature 
and God told the seed to learn from the uh, from Yosef's great thing, and that's why Yosef's coffin was so important to be taken out of Egypt with them. And uh, I think with that, we are uh, we have finished the um, Hallel. I think we'll continue next week again with a uh, with the blessing that we make just before the uh, second cup. And uh, again, have a great Shabbos. Thank you for coming, and uh, God bless you.